Welcome to Thursday, guys. The day looks the same. Let's get kickstart. Let's kickstart our day with some reading. Right then, let's have a look at our reading activity. So our two questions, we always start with the question first. So our first question, what other creatures lived by the ponds? We've got to write two answers. So the sentence stem that we're going to use are two other creatures that lived by the pond were somebody and somebody. So we know we're going to be keeping our beady eyes and our ears, thinking about what two creatures lived by the pond. And question 12, one day, huge rumbling, grumbling machines crawled towards the pond. What does this sentence tell you about the machines? So we've got four options. They moved quickly. The machines were noisy. The machines were small. The machines were silent. So this sentence tells me that machines what? So let's hold those questions in our head as we move on to have a read. So I'd like you to pause here and have a read of a new home, please, guys. Now, remember the two areas that you're looking for. Two other creatures that live by the pond. Keep scanning for that information. And what does that sentence tell you about the machines? What do we learn about the machines in this page? So pause here. OK, you've read it. Do you feel like you've got your answer yet? Let's have a little read together. So a new home, past the last house, past the factory gates, past the edge of town. There, hidden at the feet of ancient trees, sparkled a small green pond. Tall reeds rustled around the edges, hiding croaking frogs and clouds of buzzing insects. The pond was home for two small wild ducks who spent their days swimming and diving for food and their nights sleeping safely on a small island. One day, huge rumbling, rumbling machines crawled towards the pond. Here's our sentence. With a roar and a gurgle, out poured the pond's precious water. Now the pond and island were gone forever. The ducks would have to find another place to live. The ducks needed water where they could swim and find food and a safe place to sleep. Oh no, ducks. So two of the creatures that lived by the pond were who and who. And the sentence about there are huge rumbling, grumbling machines crawling towards the pond tells you that the machines what? Let's have a look at our answers. Make sure you've got them written down. So we know that the two other creatures that lived by the pond were, and you can see the blue highlight there, were the frogs and a cloud of buzzing insects. So were frogs and insects. And question 12, this sentence, the huge rumbling, bumbling machines crawled towards the pond, tells me that the machine was noisy. They're talking about the noise. So they talk about the size. It was huge. It's a rumbling grumbling machine it's making lots of noise so our maths for today we're thinking about measuring temperature so what might we use to figure out the temperature of something the temperature of something and what vocabulary might we use to describe the temperature? So when we're thinking about the temperature, we might be saying, well, what, what's the temperature of the swimming pool? Or what is the temperature outside? Or what's the temperature in the car? Oh, I feel a little bit warm or cold in the house. What's the temperature? When we are measuring temperature. Okay, so of course we measure in degrees Celsius. And you can see here, where the thermometer is going from being frigid cold to scorchio hot. And it's counting in degrees Celsius. When you go from the bottom up further up, you're going up in degrees Celsius. Okay. So let's have a look at this together. Now, if you're feeling creative, if you're a bit stuck with something to do, if you've got some cardboard or some large paper lying around, then you could make your very own thermometer and you could figure out a way to show us different amounts. It might be that you make yourself a great big thermometer or even a little one. And if you put a little slit in it somewhere so that you can slide a piece of paper 
down and up there. I'll be very impressed to see if there's any D&T experts that could make us a super duper thermometer. If not, you can just shout along with me, okay? So on this one here, I would like you to have a think about where would 10 degrees Celsius be? Where would you pop 10 degrees Celsius on this thermometer? Would I put it here? Would I put it here? Oh, what would that measure? That would measure that would measure zero, wouldn't it? How about if I put it here? What would it measure if I popped it here? It would measure two degrees. How about if I put it here? We haven't got a number here, but if that's two, what would it be if I put it here? You've got a number here, that would be four. So two, what would go here? It'd be three, wouldn't it? Two, three, four. Five. So show me where where do you think 10 degrees would go? So you'd find, oh, luckily we've got the number 10. So it would go here. Okay, let's have a look on the next one. 18 degrees this time. So is it going to be nice and easy? Is there an 18 degrees there for us to see? Can you spot it? Where would you fill the wall? Where would you, the, sorry, where would the thermometer measure up to? It would go to 18. Up there. Ooh, this time we've got 15 degrees. Where would 15 go? So you can see if we're looking up, we go from 12 to 14 to 16. Oh, but there's no 15, so where would it go? It's in between 14, 15, 16. So it would go just here, wouldn't it? Now, I want you to do some do it. So if you haven't created your own thermometer, if you have, you can show me and you can get your grown up to take pictures of you do it. I'm doing the actions here like a crazy lady. You can get your grown up to take pictures of you show me 16 degrees, then 35 degrees, then 70 degrees, and then nine degrees. Gosh, we've got some jumps there, haven't we? Um, if not, if you haven't got your own thermometer, then you can draw it. Even when we're going up into bigger numbers here, you can see here that the thermometer isn't going up in ones, is it? They're all going up in different amounts. So here it's going up in 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you need to find 16. Here it's going up in what? 0, 5, 10, ah, 15, 20, 20. So you've got to find 35 degrees. Here it's going up in 0, 10, 20, 30. 40, okay, so you've got to find 70, and here it's going up again in 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, where would 9 be, okay, so pause me here, draw your own thermometers, or do your, create your own thermometer to show me your temperatures, pause here please guys, and email me your work. So let's have a check. Did you get them in the right place? 16 is hugging 16. 35 is hugging our 5 column. 70 is in our 10s column. And then 9 appears in between the 8 and the 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How did you do? Can you spot the mistake? If you can, well done. That's where the learning takes place. Now, different thermometers go up in different scales as we've just seen. So you need to look carefully at the scale. I want you to write down the temperature for each thermometer and now compare using your greater than or less than or equals to sign. So we can't see them at the moment. We're going to have a look in some more detail in a second. But we've got to write down how many degrees here, how many degrees here, so we can figure out which way that crocodile is going to eat. You always wants to eat which? What does it always want to eat? It always wants to eat the most. So Mrs. Mullen has given us a little example here to figure out together. So you can see that this scale is measuring at how many degrees is that first one? It's measuring at here. It's measuring at, so I'm going to pop my 12 there. And then this one over here, oh let's have a look at the scale, it's going up in 0, 5, 10, 15, Okay, so it's going up in five, so I've jumped up to the 20, so it's 20. So which one is my crocodile going to want to eat? Which way is that crocodile mouth going to have to go? It's going to be wanting to eat the 20 degrees. So that's what you've got to do in your secure it, guys, okay? So there's 12 on the one side, there's 20 on the other, and he's going to be eating over there. So here you go. Pause here. You can draw your thermometers in your books, or you could just write the number sentences that you get from them. So tell me how many degrees here, 
tell me how many degrees here, which way is your crocodile going to go? Now, remember, the scales are important. This one looks huge. It looks like, of course, the crocodile's definitely going to be eating this way. Of course it is. But is it? Have a look what the scales go up in. This one goes up in 0, 10, 20. This one goes up in 0, 2, 4, 6. So make sure you calculate looking at the scales before your crocodiles are going. So pause here, calculate the scales, and then put your crocodiles in. Pause me now. Okay. We've got, even though it looks like the crocodile should definitely be this side, this one's 30, this one's 18. 30 is bigger than 18. This looks like it can't be equal. Look how tall this one is and how short this one is. But look, this one is 5, 10, 15. This one is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. So they're both equal to each other. And then this one looks like it should be equal. It's really tried to trick us. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Ooh, 31, 32 and a half. Ooh, that is a tricky one, Mrs. Molina. And then we've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 13. So this one over here is the bigger. How did you do? Can you spot the mistake? Because the mistake is where your learning is. Let's deepen it. What is the same and what is different about these thermometers and temperatures? So I want you to have a close look, have a think about the scales that we're working with, and then I would like you to be able to verbally tell me in a sentence and then write that sentence down what is the same, what is different about these two thermometers, please, guys. So pause me now. What is the same and what is different? Pause me now. Both thermometers are showing the exact same temperature. Even though they look really different, they're showing the same temperature. So this one goes up in fives. And so it looks much larger than this one that goes up in tens but they're both showing 30 degrees email me your answers guys i'd love to see how you've got on with that thermometer learning and if anybody's been brave enough to make a, their very own thermometer good job guys okay we're going to have a look at using the conjunctions so and but and all okay so let's take a look so we've got to rearrange the sentences below so that they make sense. If we read these words at the moment, apples but I like, don't, pears, I like, that makes no sense. So it's your job to figure out how you can rearrange those words into a sentence that tells me something. Remember, a sentence is giving information, so you need to be able to use all those words to tell me something. And then once you've done that one, black is my, he, cat, and fluffy is. I think they're trying to tell me something about their cat. What kind of cat? Work it out for me, guys. Rearrange these sentences so they make sense and write them down in your book. Pause me here while you do it. Have you got it? Let's have a look and see. Okay, possible answers, because you might have something a little bit different, and I'll be able to tell you, if you email it over to me, I'll be able to tell you that you've got it bob on. So the possible answers are, I like apples, but I don't like pears. What else could you like? I like pears, but I don't like apples, could be another one of your answers. And my cat is black, and he is fluffy. Or you could start with, my cat is fluffy, and he is black. Did you get it? Email me your answers, guys. I want you to underline the conjunction. So th write this sentence into your book. Now, the point of this is it is easy copying. Your sentences, your spelling should be bob on. Your writing should be gorgeous. It should be on the line. You should have your tall letters tall. You should have your descenders. Have we got any descenders? No, we haven't. So just those tall ascenders should be nice and tall. Your capital letters should stand alone by itself. Super tall. Make your writing look gorgeous. Really give it, use this as an opportunity to focus on your handwriting. And then I want you to underline the conjunction in the sentence. So pause me here. 
email me your sentence, let me need to kiss my phone and be just thrilled at how gorgeous it looks, please, guys. Which word did we need to underline? We needed to underline conjunction, but did you underline it? Good job if you did. English. So we're going to pretend to be the snail on this incredible underwater adventure. And the places that you explore could be from the book or they could be from somewhere you've been yourself, a particularly fun park or holiday or day out. Maybe you went to the cinema. Did you say were you the snail and you went to see an amazing film? Imagine that. Maybe nobody would see you. Maybe it would be like a stealth secret snail cinema visit. But whatever it is, you are going to be the snail and you are going to go on an adventure. Let's see how we can add some detail to our podcast. So a super descriptive sentence is going to be our focus today. We're going to think about, you know, when we're doing our diary and we're thinking about all our feelings, that's what makes writing interesting for the reader. So I want you to know what you could see, hear, feel and touch. I want you to think about adjectives and adverbs that you can use to describe that sentence. And can you compare it to anything? It was like a. So wherever you are, you have to tell your postcard reader what you can sense using as much detail as you possibly can to make it as engaging as possible. So on a piece of paper or in your book what you're going to do you're going to have a space you can draw yourself a box you don't need to draw a box but you're just going to give yourself a space and in that space you're going to draw this a scene that you are describing so part of the experience that you're having wherever you've decided you're going to be writing from you're going to draw it there and then you're going to tell me something you can see something you can hear something you can taste something you might touch something you might smell so i'm going to show you the example that i've used from the snake and the whale so that's my aren't I a good drawer and a, a wonderful illustrator I borrowed this from the book haven't I so I would have drawn in there the picture of the sharks because that's the part of the story that I'm going to be focusing on and then I've written what I can see I can see and I'm thinking about my adjectives here I can see sh knife sharp teeth I can hear chomping jaws I can taste my own saliva increasing in my mouth. I can feel that I'm trembling and I can smell the blood on the shark's breath. So now I want you to do the same thing. And I, I want you to draw maybe a couple of different scenes because you're not just going to talk about one thing that you see, are you? So draw your scene, talk about what you can see, hear, taste, touch and smell. And then maybe draw another scene or two so that tomorrow when we come to write our postcards, you'll know exactly what it is that you're going to be talking about. And it, all the things that you can tell the reader that's going to read your postcard. And don't forget that CC work that we have loved. I think it's some of our favourite work and favourite projects that we've seen when you are doing, when you're thinking outside the box and you're doing your CC work. So good job, guys. Keep it coming.